Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC has announced temporary end to the nationwide strike it started on Monday. NLC in a tweet few minutes ago said the strike is only called off for one week to allow the conclusion of the agreements it has reached with the federal government. Strike action will last for one week to allow the conclusion of negotiation, details shortly, NLC tweeted. We have reported that Nigeria Workers' Unions under the umbrella body of Trade Union Congress, TUC and Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC has issued another statement on Tuesday morning indicating that the organized union has not called off strike its embarked on Monday to protest and demand the federal government of Nigeria to honor their request of 494,000 Naira's minimum wage to be received by the least paid workers in the country following the government's increased electricity tariffs and the current extreme rising high cost of living in the country. But information gathered indicated that the leadership of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, and the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, has resolved to relax the national strike after the outcome of the Convent Joint Extraordinary National Executive Council in Abuja. NLC in a tweet on Tuesday morning, stated that, until we hear from our organs at our meeting scheduled for today the 4th of June, we are still on strike. NLC had raised alarm of attempted intimidation by soldiers while the workers' unions were having an emergency meeting at the Secretary to Government of Federation office on Monday night. NLC had tweeted thus, soldiers are presently surrounding the venue of the meeting between labor and government at the premises of the SGF. In a swift reaction, Nigerian army authority refuted the claims made by the NLC and stated in quote thus, the attention of army headquarters has been drawn to a false breaking news by NLC alleging that soldiers currently surround the venue of the ongoing meeting between NLC and the SGF. Kindly note that the NSA, Malam Nohu Rebadu, who is also attending the meeting, arrived at the meeting venue with his retinue of statutorily approved military escorts. Once the meeting is over, the escorts will leave the NSA from the venue. Kindly disregard the deliberate and misleading falsehood being penned about the presence of the escorts at the meeting. After meeting at the SGF office, the NLC issued a jointly signed agreement document both from the representatives of the federal government and the organized labor, indicating they have reached an agreement and they may call of the strike action after Tuesday meeting. Further to the negotiation by the Tripartite Committee on National Minimum Wage, NMW, and subsequent withdrawal of labor from negotiation, the leadership of the National Assembly intervened on the 2nd of June 2024. The organized labor declared nationwide strike on Monday the 3rd of June 2024 to drive home its demands. 2. The federal government, in the national interest, convened a meeting with labor held in the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation on Monday the 3rd of June with a view to ending the strike action. 3. After exhaustive deliberation and engagement by both parties, the following resolutions were reached. 1. The President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria is committed to a national minimum wage that is higher than 60,000 Naira. 2. Arising from the above, the Tripartite Committee is to meet every day for the next one week with a view to arriving at an agreeable national minimum wage. 3. Labor in deference to the high esteem of the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria's commitment in E, above undertakes to convert a meeting of its organs immediately to consider this commitment. And, IV, no worker will be victimized as a result of the industrial action. Done in Abuja on the 3rd of June, 2024. Signed for the Federal Government of Nigeria, 1. Mohamed Idris, Minister of Information and National Orientation. 2. Honorable Nkeruka Onyejeocha, Minister of State for Labor and Employment. For the organized labor, 1. Joe Ajayo, President, Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC. 2. Festus Osifo, President, Trade Union Congress, TUC. The signed document made available by NLC reads in quote. It was observed that on Monday, almost all the economic activities in Nigeria were paralyzed as the workers' unions began the indefinite strike action over the new minimum wage demand. First, labor leaders on Monday while enforcing the ongoing strike by NLC and TUC, confronted CSP Olinka ABA, Commander, Rapid Response Squad, RRS, over the locking of gates at Lagos State Secretariat, Alausa. The federal government had appealed to the organized labor to shelve its planned industrial action and return to the negotiating table. The Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, had also on Friday declared an indefinite strike beginning from Monday over the hike in electricity tariff and the inability of the Tripartite Committee on New Minimum Wage to reach a consensus. On Saturday, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, urged Labor to weigh its move and consider the financial implications of its 494,000 virus new minimum wage demand on the government. Early on Monday, photographic images made available online indicated that members of the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, an affiliate of the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC led siege to the entrance and exit of the National Assembly where Nigerian lawmakers hold Congress. Also, members of the NLC and TUC in a no-state locked off the state secretariat, shutting out civil servants from the complex in compliance with the union's nationwide indefinite strike directive.
The union say even though the state government recently increased the minimum wage to 70,000 Nairas, they had to comply with the national bodies directive, maintaining that the strike is not targeted at the state. Before Monday's strike action began, the leadership of the National Assembly held a meeting with the organized labor as part of efforts to avert the planned nationwide strike. President of the Senate, Gosul Apageo, who is presiding over the meeting, urges Lemo to show understanding, assuring that the National Assembly will do all it can to see that a compromise is arrived at. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, was also in attendance. Also at the meeting held behind closed doors were ministers of key ministries, the president of NLC, Joe Ajayo, and that of Top Festus Osifo. On Monday, students of the Kaduna Polytechnic were locked out of their campus by labor officials in compliance with the nationwide indefinite strike declared by the NLC Talk. Local media reports indicated that as early as 7 a.m., union officials stormed the Ungoen Remy campus of the Polytechnic and drove the students out of the school before locking the gate. Photographs posted online showed passengers stranded as the workers' minimum wage strike paralyzed domestic flights in some airports across the country. Hundreds of passengers were reportedly left stranded at Motala Mohammed Airport, Lagos. Facebook user, and you can finger through his page expressed worries and asked a question thus, the timing of this strike is very critical. If NLC strike extends till Wednesday, how will South Africa get to you? NLC says restrictions on international flights at the various international airports in Nigeria will start tomorrow. What are the options? Will the Bafafana Bafana use your own airways, a special technology to fly undetected? Or will South Africa land in Cameroon and use boats via Sea Express? Or better still, they land in Benin Republic and use bus. NLC has the bombs of the whole system in their hands. Every minute counts. Punch newspaper captured the Monday nationwide strike action in a manner partly presented verbatim below. Some patients at the Kuma General Hospital, Abuja, have been left stranded as medical personnel have declined to attend to them in keeping with the ongoing strike by the Nigerian Labour Congress. The NLC and the Trade Union Congress commenced an industrial action on Monday to protest the 60,000 Naira's minimum wage proposal by the federal government. Although the gates of the hospital were opened, a worker at the radiology unit was held informing patients who came for scans that the hospital would not be attending to patients as a result of the strike. We are not attending to patients today, because of the strike, she told the patients. A patient at the pharmacy unit of the accident and emergency wards, who did not give her name, lamented that she had made payments, but was declined the medication, and a refund of her money, as the unit had closed because of the strike. She said, they collected money and refused to give us the drugs. Even the medicine too, if they knew they won't attend to anyone because of the strike, why did they open? While the postnatal ward and laboratory units seemed to be operating, our correspondent gathered that the hospital staff were attempting to attend to as many patients as possible before the labor leaders would arrive to enforce the strike. Nigerian workers in Abuja have shut down the federal secretariat in compliance with an indefinite strike action declared by NLC, TUC over new minimum wage on Monday. Recall that the labor unions called for a nationwide strike over the breakdown in the minimum wage negotiations by a tripartite committee constituted by the federal government in January. The leadership of the labor unions had, on May 1st, given the federal government up till May 31st to complete negotiations on the new minimum wage, failure of which they might not be able to guarantee industrial peace in the country. The parliamentary staff union of Nigeria joined the indefinite strike action called by organized labor, shutting down the National Assembly. The two gates of the assembly complex were shot by the union with workers and other visitors unable to gain access. The electricity and water supply to the two buildings housing the Senate and the House of Representatives as well as other facilities in the complex have been shut down by the union. The move is in solidarity with the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC and Trade Union Congress, TUC, who had earlier called for an indefinite strike beginning from Sunday midnight to praise home their demands. These demands border on the non-conclusion of negotiation for a national minimum wage and the hike in electricity tariff. Also, BBC in its report stated that this is the fourth national strike since Bola Tinubu became president last year. Millions of Nigerians are without electricity after the national grid was shut down as part of a general strike over the rising cost of living. The country was plunged into darkness shortly after 2 o'clock local time, 1 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, when union members prevented operators at the country's power control rooms from working and shut down electricity substations. Many flights have also been cancelled in the country's busiest airport in Lagos and in the capital, Abuja, with passengers left stranded. Unions are demanding a huge increase in the minimum wage, saying workers cannot survive on the current rate of 30,000 naira, 18 pounds, 22 dollars a month. The government is offering to double this but security guard Malam Madajigaba tells the BBC that this would not even be enough to buy a 50 kilograms bag of rice, which he needs to feed his family each month. The bag of rice costs 75,000 naira, 56 dollars, 44 pounds, more than the government's proposal, even before taking other expenses into account.
I am calling on the government to consider us and increase the minimum wage so that we can live and eat decently, says Mr. Madaji, who works for the Education Ministry in the northern city of Kanu. It's not fair that we have top government officials earning millions monthly and the smallest workers earn so little and finding it difficult to feed. The 59-year-old said he sometimes has to work to work as he cannot afford to pay for transport. Why Nigeria's economy is in such a mess? Nigeria's unions under the umbrella of the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress are demanding the minimum wage be increased to 494,000 naira, 290 pounds, 369 dollars, which they say reflects the current economic realities. The government says accepting these demands would cripple the economy and lead to job losses because many businesses would not be able to pay their workers and so have to close. Mandaji Gama said he sometimes works to work as he can't afford to pay for transport. Schools, offices and hospitals across the country have also been closed. This strike is the fault since President Bola Tinubu came to office last year. Since then, Nigerians have been hit by a double whammy of the removal of a foreign subsidy and the collapse in the value of the Naira, leading to the worst economic crisis in a generation. The government has ended the policy of pegging the value of the Naira to the US dollar, allowing it to dramatically depreciate. Whereas 10,000 Naira would have bought $22 last May, it will now only purchase $6.80. Mr. Tinubu says the measures are necessary to reform the economy so it works better in the long term but in the short term, inflation has risen to nearly 34% and wages have not kept up. Businesses, airports, universities, hospitals and power supply were affected as labor began an indefinite strike on Monday over labor's demand for a new minimum wage. Both NLC and TUC said the current minimum wage of 30,000 Nairas can no longer cater to the well-being of an average Nigerian worker, lamenting that not all governors are paying the current wage award which expired in April 2024, five years after the Minimum Wage Act of 2019 was signed by former President Muhammad Buhari. The Act should be reviewed every five years to meet the contemporary economic demands of workers. Meanwhile, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, said the workers' demands are not affordable. The minister, who was a guest on Channel's television's Sunday politics program said, it is difficult because the worker deserves his wage, and given what is going on, they deserve a change and, by law, every five years, and maybe, we shouldn't have to wait five years every time to set a new wage scale. The fact is that by law, it is a minimum wage. So, you are not setting a wage for federal government workers, for example. In a federation, you are setting a minimum figure that states must pay, that local governments must pay, that the private sector must pay, that small businesses must pay. It is a fixed figure, not a scale. So, there are elements of how we have set the minimum wage in the past, particularly what we call the consequential adjustment, which, given what Labour is asking today, will be unaffordable across the board. We have to focus on the fact that once it is enshrined in law, everybody that falls into the category of having to pay the minimum wage must pay it. Therefore, the affordability has to be taken into account. We probably have to also take into account the fact that there are other ways of supporting the cost of living of workers other than wage scale. BBC report ends in quote. After you go say make civil servant notif, my brother, if I get opportunity, I go tip them join, even them when they there so I go tip them. I'm telling you, it's so annoying. All right, lastly, before I let you go, I mean, if government decides not to move away from the 60,000, will this strike continue? And do My you brother, think this strike will yield any result? I know what make you finish your question. If they like, may they say no. Say they no go. Say may they still die for that 60,000 either when they talk. Therefore, then they go no say a hungry man is an angry man. And when the birds, when the hunters learn to shoot without missing, so the birds learn to fly without fetching. They go here and they go collect auto auto. Not that's the way we do so. You get where we go do our reach now. We go they walk out for street, they destroy them, they kill themselves. Thank you so much. Thank because a hungry man is an angry man. As with the first so my brother, as I come here this morning, so I never show. I've been by children, they forbid to go to the high school when their children they go. They go carry their children, thief our money, they carry their children, go better school. When they finish, they'll come load their children over us again. They return you say, experience, do you qualify? Do you have this qualification? Qualification of kid their parents there. Qualification of kid them. Nonsense people. Continue. Huh? Nonsense idiots. That's so. You know how much senator they collect a month? Even their SS, those days we go to school, say we don't want to be uh, touts. touts. Now touts be their SA and others, what they do for them. And yeah, do you know how much they collect? They, they collect they above three, four hundred thousand naira every month. If you say we know, for just Kukuma sit down for touting. So that all of us go, they do touting. So, eh? so it be. Before they do touting, they will come so far, go school finish, go school finish, now we'll come manage, come enter the civil service work, then they'll they call the sofa house. They'll call the sofa house. Yes, yeah? right. So as time goes on now, we go join the tout team so that make all of us the tout. Better, better. Yes. 
Why are we scared when we say pay a worker one million? When those in National Assembly are collecting 16, 17, 30 million. So why are we so discriminated if you hear one million for a worker? See, so somebody can collect 15, 16 million for a job, not even commensurate to the job that the worker is doing. Why can't a worker get one million? The situation whereby you, you need a bag full of naira to get a handful of goods. So let nobody be scared about that. Unless it is cheap, the demand will not have no end. And the minimum wage, we're going to insist for the review to be annual. Or else if you collect any money and the value of the currency is changing per hour, it will not make any sense and it will be illogical, you know, to return that amount for the next four or five years. So these are dynamics of the negotiation. Bring in new news in a more digital way.